Hi guys, um, thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna show you how to seal and protect your alcohol ink painting and then mount it onto a cradled panel, a cradled wood panel with resin. So, and if you want to, you can stay to the end of the video and learn more about uh, some of the classes that I'm offering right now on how to do these special alcohol ink techniques. Thank you so much for joining me today and let's get started. Welcome to how to seal and protect your alcohol ink painting. It's important that we protect um, our paintings from smudging and smearing. We want to preserve all those beautiful little details we work so hard to get and we want to protect our paintings from UV rays and light. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is start with a thoroughly dried alcohol ink painting. Make sure it's 24 hours dried. And then what I do is I take my paintings outside. I like using this little half mask and these are my two favorite products. The Kamar Varnish by Krylon and the Krylon UV Archival varnish. There's other products, but these are the two that I enjoy working with. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do for the first step is to go into a well-ventilated area, spray the artwork with two or three light coats of the Kamar varnish about 12 to 14 inches from your subject and allow 30 minutes to an hour of drying time between layers. So this is the Krylon Kamar varnish and this is the one that you're going to use first. See how easy and quick, this is a quick process, these coats. You do not want to be too close, it's not a heavy coat, just very light. And then you need to allow it to dry completely before proceeding to step two, and it could take a little while. Um, step two, we're going to use the UV archival varnish. And it's basically the same exact process. Um, you just want to allow it to dry uh, between coats just like the first one and it's the exact same process. It's the same distance and everything. You don't want to do too much, but you want to make sure that those light coats can, can uh, dry in between. And then you're going to want to allow your painting to cure in case you're packaging it up for shipment, make sure it cures for a while. Now, I like to tell my clients that these paintings are very sensitive to UV light. So if, if you or your client are going to hang these paintings, it's best to do it framed behind UV glass and also out of direct sunlight. We want to preserve all of the beautiful little details in our paintings and this is how we do it. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope this tip was helpful. And now I want to show you how to take those beautiful alcohol pieces to the next level. I'm going to show you how to mount your alcohol ink on a cradled wood panel with resin. So all the supplies that you'll need are listed in the description box, but I want to go over some of the things that you're going to need here. You're going to need a couple pieces of parchment paper uh, to protect your alcohol ink painting, and we do need wood panels. I used these ones from Dick Blick. They were a great deal and you got a package of four 11 by 14 they were just wonderful I thought they were really reasonably priced you're gonna need a soft brush or if you don't have that a foam brush would work just fine for this this is called a brayer and they come in a few different sizes if you don't have a brayer or don't want to buy one you can use a rolling pin that works pretty good I just happen to have these for another project and it really helps to get all those little air bubbles out from underneath the uh, glue and your painting so uh, electrical tape this is just the cheapest vinyl electrical insulation tape it works great and I got that at Amazon and golden soft gel gloss that's how we're gonna adhere the painting to the wood panel. It works great. Now you're gonna need some resin. I like counterculture DIY, but you can use whatever resin that makes you happy. And that's totally fine. Um, I just happen to really enjoy 
the way that this one works. You're going to need a torch. That's imperative. You cannot get by without one. And some mixing cups. It's great if there's uh, measuring devices on those cups, but you don't have to. You can eyeball it if you're a good eyeballer as well. And you need a stirring device. I used a little popsicle stick and some gloves. That's really important that you have those. You have to have an X-Acto knife um, or something sharp that you can cut uh, pretty exactly with. So that's why I use that. You don't need the little mat underneath of it. That was just for show. And a ruler helps if you need to make sure to get your piece cut exactly the size of the wood panel. And the links to the materials are all in the description box. So what I'm going to do here first is take the soft brush and get some of that uh, sawdust off of your panel. I couldn't believe how much there was on there, you guys. Look, you don't want that to end up in your resin. It would be a disaster. So don't forget to get that sawdust off, you guys. Now, I cut my painting to almost exactly the size of the wood panel with a little tiny bit of an overhang, maybe like a millimeter on all sides. And then you take that soft gel gloss and you just make sure to get all the way to the edges, get every single corner, every single bit. Now you don't need a huge thick layer. This is just a very thin layer over the top of that. And just use your finger and kind of get up any uh, drips around the edges if you can. I should have removed that and not put that little blob back on there truthfully but that's what I chose to do. Now you can see my piece is a little tiny bit uh, smaller on two sides and bigger on two sides and that's totally okay that's just how the paper was but um, Technically, it would be nice if you can cut it just to like about a millimeter bigger than the wood panel all the way around. Um, then you use the brayer to, to basically push out all of those air bubbles. And if you have any glue on the uh, that kind of squeezes out, you need to get that off. Make sure that doesn't uh, stay there. It will make it more difficult in the end. So. You can kind of see how that is. Check for any air bubbles or any places you might have missed. Make sure all the corners are really securely pushed down and then you have to weigh it down. Weigh it down. You have to. So in this case I put a piece of parchment paper and then the wood panels and a really heavy box of watercolor pencils and some other stuff I think. And I just let it set for 24 to 48 hours. And that just helps keep everything nice and tight on there. And it worked great. And so now your X-Acto knife will come in and you're just going to want to take and cut the little bit of the edge of the painting all the way to the edge. Now this really gives a beautiful finished polished look. This is like there's no overhang and it just looks awesome but just be really 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 careful not to cut yourself because when I'm reviewing this footage I was like oh no that looks really 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 dangerous. <laughs> oh, kind of scary. <laughs> that then I just shifted positions so I didn't cut myself. But I just love that really professional, clean look it gives on the edge of those panels. Now, this electrical tape is awesome. It's the cheapest. You can find the link to all the materials in the description box if you want to know which one I used. I just found it on Amazon. And it's awesome because basically you just put that tape right next to the edge, on the sides, on the back, and completely cover the edges. So the drips from the resin 
basically go on the tape. They didn't go under the tape. It was great. And I'm going to try this on a canvas. I have never used this tape on a canvas, but man, it worked awesome for the cradled wood panel. So counterculture DIY resin is my favorite resin, but most resins act the same way. They need a part A and a part B mixed together, and that causes the hardening process. The most important thing is you need exactly the same amount. So in this case, I just used this little cup up to that line right there, and I made sure that the other cup was the same. So um, that means that you need to make sure that you get all of your resin out of the other cup when you're mixing them together and that you use equal amounts. I actually wish I would have mixed up a little tiny bit more resin for this because I had to do a second coat. I was being very, very, very stingy right here. <laughs> but it still worked out in the end. Now you have to stir for three minutes. It's really important that it's thoroughly mixed. And then I elevate the board on top of some cups. Now. When that resin first pours out, look how many bubbles are in there. There's just a ton of air bubbles, but it's okay. We're going to get those out with our torch. Uh, you want to make sure to get all your resin out. And then I started spreading with this popsicle stick and realized I didn't want to accidentally scrape my beautiful alcohol ink painting. So even though it's sealed like I showed you earlier and protected, it could still actually be damaged with that popsicle stick so I use my hands and that's just fine if you use your gloved hands to spread that around you totally can and uh, it definitely creates a hands-on experience you just want to make sure that you don't accidentally um, you know lift that electrical tape off the sides at all and just spread it in an even layer but resin is self leveling so it will level out even if there's you know little ridges or whatever you just want to make sure you get it on every single part of your painting now I didn't show this part on camera but you have to torch to remove the air bubbles you have to so wait a few minutes and then you torch again and then you repeat it the process again and you keep doing it until the air bubbles are gone completely and it's really really important so that's what it looks like after it's been torched a couple times but in between there I remove all the dust and the specks and the dirt out of the resin you have to do this you have to I've heard just too many horror stories of people getting their um, paintings from the artist and there's just little bits of hair and dust and dirt and what a terrible way to ruin a beautiful painting with a big hair in the middle of it and a lot of us have pets and a lot of us you know there would be dust in the air it's totally normal my studio is really clean and I still had all these little tiny specks because I had my air purifier running so and you can see those just make sure you have plenty of good light and just gently use some tweezers to lift those out see that one right there now you want to cover your baby <laughs> you have to cover it completely or else more dust hair specs I used a box um, but they'll get in there if you don't cover it so you have to cover it and then let your resin cure according to the package directions of your resin this one takes 24 hours or so and then when it's all done it should be set up and beautiful so I this was after the second coat I did end up putting on two coats but I think it turned out really pretty and I really loved the way the cradled wood panel was. It's very solid. It made this piece look incredibly professional. And you know, a lot of times when you're doing alcohol inks, you're just using paper. So this really gives like a professional, solid look to your piece. Now, some people finish their wood with GAC 100, and that is something I probably will do next time just to try it out. But look how pretty those edges looked. Just gorgeous. And that is how it looks at the end, and I think it turned out great. Very professional looking. That resin adds just a 
beautiful professionalism now. Do you guys know that I'm offering online classes? The first one's called A Study in Slate and Valencia Alcohol Inc. These are online private tutorials and we talk about all of these things, illusions of depth, creating texture in your work, layering for interest. Um, I started a Facebook group for support, so you guys can join me there if you take the classes, a study in Slate and Valencia. Let's create something together, you guys. It's a great value. You get eight videos in total. And I'm going to offer a 20% off code. The link is in the description box if you're interested in learning with me. And as always, I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye-bye.